What's good, guys? It's your boy, Sport Card Tom. Um, we're back with another episode, my third episode of the Slab Stocks FC show. Um, today, again, um, after last week, brought on a friend, Card Hour. Um, I'm bringing on another friend, another guy who I've connected with in the last year uh, in the hobby of, of sports cards and a bit of Pokemon as well. But primarily, um, we're going to be talking about football with him today. Uh, brought on Joe at Jojo JMS on Instagram. Um, I'm, I'm glad to have you. I've had you've had me on your show before, so I'm glad to be. I'm glad to get you a part of this one. Um, get a few of your insights on today's show. So, do you want to introduce yourself, Joe? Yeah, hello everyone. So I'm Joe or uh, Jojo JMS on Instagram, as some of, some of you will know me. Um, I had Tom on uh, my YouTube channel. We had a great chat about basically everything soccer related. So hopefully, this is another just nice chat about uh, stickers and whatnot. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. And to this day, Joe probably has the best, best thumbnail of me on his YouTube channel. <laughs> um, I mean, to this day, let's, let's be honest, that's the, that was the funniest thumbnail I think I've seen. The best <laughs> I, saw, I was in love with it. So, um, one quick, right. So, the first, the first questions, um, always we just want to try and get an understanding of your knowledge or how you got into the hobby mm -hmm. and what your sort of aspect of it was, your view and uh, your way into it. So, um, soccer cards, obviously, primarily. How did you get into to like football cards, soccer cards in the first place, and, and what was your sort of path into into that? So my uh, my story is a little bit different. So I've actually been selling soccer cards quotation marks since I was about twelve yep. on eBay. Um, I've started a I started a business in the basically in the playground to complete my own sets. So I was selling match tacks and um, like adrenaline cards for quite you know quite low prices, but it was seeing me through my sort of school days. And then um, I started to move up into Pokemon because that was a more established market. Um, and then when uh, Prism gained attention, I had I had a few Prism cards of my own just from random packs I bought back in 2014. So I searched the value of those and saw that the soccer market was taking a similar sort of uh, pattern to the Pokemon market. So I got involved, did my research, and I haven't looked back since, really. Okay, so just going into that a little bit. So... It seems like from sort of like a young age, you were quite like entrepreneurial minded in terms of like buying and selling like sports cards and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, and obviously like now me knowing you, maybe people don't know this, you run a very, I would say successful business. You know, you've had Lad Bible cover you, which is a huge, huge news outlet in the UK uh, in terms of a media company. Um, would you say in terms of sports cards now, would you say that it's, it's turned into something where you can actually create yourself potentially a living in the future or even right now um where you can you know you could you can provide a, a means to uh, you know an income from from football cards alone uh, that is kind of my my aim i wouldn't be able to do it right now but i've i'm lucky because i've got the experience from pokemon and from uh, just selling cards since i was a young boy to just kind of i kind of know what i'm doing already yeah. so I, I i i do back my i do back myself to uh, to make it a full-time income and obviously I've made mistakes like we all have, but that is the aim and that's also like the passion that that's what I'd love to do. And uh I'm yeah, I'm gonna I'm just enjoying every day pretty much, literally every day of it. See, I, I feel like it's the same for a lot of people. I feel like if, if you hand it, if you ask people, would you like to be able to buy, sell, flip cards on the daily as, as you know your main source of income, you know, you could provide for yourself throughout however many years. Um, I think a lot of people would, would take that that opportunity. Um, one thing which to me always is sort of a, a good thing, a good sort of indication of whether or not I would like to do that is I ask, would that then become, would that take the fun away from the hobby for me? You know, if I was buying, selling, flipping cards, would that take the fun away from it? And I mean, you you straight away and inherently you no. just said no. Um, no. So, I mean, do you want to sort of give your opinion on yeah. why, why that Yeah, is? definitely. Um, it's, it's, if anything, it makes it more fun because when, when I was a kid, I, I knew what was valuable. I, I actually remember... Uh, I haven't said it to this before. I remember looking at Ronaldo's Mega Cracks um, yeah. way back in the day. It was like two hundred pound, and I was like, yeah. "Why is that so expensive?" And I, I kind of like kind of learned it was a rookie, but I didn't really look like think twice because obviously back then that's a lot of money for me. Yeah. But I, I've now got to the point now where, where actually, if I wanted that card at two hundred pounds, I could have afforded it. And then as I continue to grow, I can afford other cards I want to invest in. And ultimately, uh, for me, I. Uh, sort of when when people when people have a business and they you talk about their business they talk about it because they love it and like we see i don't know a show in uh uk called dragon's den where we see yeah. people, entrepreneurs go onto a show and uh, pitch their business they, they love it they're passionate about it and that's the same way i feel, feel, feel about my business and the sports cards fuel that so it's not as actually they're two separate things because in my view they're like part and part so the sports cards 
make me make me passionate about business and the business makes me passionate about sports cards and it's like a virtuous cycle of me continuing to enjoy uh, making money continuing to enjoy source cards and sell them and it's it's just really fun and now that we've kind of uh seen this rise in content creation as well that, that adds a whole nother dimension to it which is all equally as fun for me so it's kind of like just bliss really in terms of obviously you have the business problems of like the business like you might lose money or deal with awkward customers but in terms of like the, the day-to-day overall how i look at my week i'd be like this is a good fun and I, I think a lot of people will agree with me yeah see for me obviously again i i'm sort of i'm a bit of both obviously I, i've got a personal collection i like to collect um but also i need to be able to make an income as well to, to afford specific pieces so um for me i can i can kind of understand both sides of it um, it's it's fun. It's fun for me to try and find the next thing. Obviously, with Prism, everybody knows about Prism. So then, for me, it was like, what's what's next? Obviously, everyone's on Messi, Ronaldo, and Neymar. So I found the 2014 Prism Paul Pogba. You know, I made a crazy, crazy amount of money on, on that. That was fun for me because it was like, yeah, I, I just like it, I kind of finessed. Like I literally bought mm. these cards at two pound each, and I sold them for like eleven, twelve to twenty pound each. It was crazy. Mm. Um, so that's where the business side kind of gets fun. It kind of it kind of is an opportunity. I feel like as the hobby starting to grow now, I feel like there's less and less of that opportunity to be able to make them huge returns. But I do feel like if you do your research and you do start to understand the market a lot more, you can sort of still find them them hidden gems in terms of it's just football cards, soccer cards, uh, where you can actually end up making decent returns. Um, so yeah, obviously let's let's move on. So you were doing this from such a young age in terms of like selling um like pretty adrenaline match attacks and stuff like mm-hmm. that um what was your first would you say your first purchase like sport card purchase um football card purchase where you were you would say you spent a, a decent amount of money but it wasn't for the potential of you to go and flip it or anything it was just for you to hold what was the first card you purchased and, and how much roughly did you spend on that um, it was in like a, I bought an order of like multi, so it was both of the 2010 um, Ronaldo Messi metalized foils, you know, from the yeah. Panini 2010. Oh, oh and okay. a, uh, yeah, yeah. And the uh, 2005 Champions of Europe Messi sticker. Okay. And those were my first sort of like uh, soccer purchases, which were like premium. They were big, quite big money. I think it was like 200 pounds for the three. Um, yeah. Big money. And sort of for, for that stage of the hobby, that's kind of a, a top end of the market. Yeah, I mean, it, they, they. I mean, I have the, I have the Messi foil from 2010. Um, yeah. I've been looking at Ronaldo. Yeah, I've been looking at Ronaldo and Messi uh, Champions of Europe stickers. Um, I've been looking at trying to get a few sealed boxes of those as well. Um, I think you know, great purchases. Um, you, you know, we'll throw them up on the screen so you guys can have a look at what Joe is talking about. Um, but one thing for me, and obviously Joe being another UK collector and trader, um, is this is a big question for me because. It, it's not as big. It wasn't as big back then when I was doing it as it is now. And obviously, you're what nineteen, so you're a bit you're yeah. six years younger than me. So it might have been different, you know, as you were growing up. Um, but growing up, what football products were available for you to purchase? So I'm talking like match tax shootout, any sort of sticker, panini sets. Like what? Yeah. What was the big thing for you growing up? So that the first year I ever collected soccer cards was the first year match tax ever had the Premier League release, which was 2007. And those are pretty. Those are I had a few shootouts, but those were, they were kind of like given to me or I, I like found them at a car boot sale but the first packets i bought were of the 2007 match tax and um i also collected the the merlin sticker albums but at my in my playground match tax were always the thing that everyone enjoyed the most because um you could trade them so you didn't stick them in the buy if you stick because obviously if you stick stickers in you can't trade them anymore whereas in match tax you, you just had the album so you can take them out and swap them yeah. so those were the and i collected those every year until i was um you know like Left, left primary school, early secondary school, I was collecting those every year. Um, and then alongside those was the, the World Cup sticker albums, which are iconic, in my opinion. Um, I think my, I, I think I had 2006, but I was a bit young to sort of understand what they were. And then 2010 and then 2014 were the, the big ones for me. Those were like the, those are, those are the albums that I'll look at when I'm 50 and be like, wow, that, that those were the days. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was shootout. I mean, I always remember being able to yeah. go after school to W.H. Smith's um, and it was... <laughs> I remember opening a pack and I was the only one in my whole year, year six, I was the only one in the sixth grade um, where who had the five star shiny Alan Shearer. Everyone, ha- everyone else had like, I remember packing Rooney as well, five star Rooney. Uh, everyone else had like Thierry Henry. I think there was Irish and Robin, Frank Lampard. Oh, just the, the card, I'll put the cards on the screen, but 
They were yeah. ridiculous cards. And if I even when I see them now, I geek out. I'm like, these these cards. I mean, my best friend, he's got he's got a full set of, of the five stars, like still in the shootout binder, which is like broken to pieces. Um, but it's like it's crazy to see because obviously now we're moving into this era where these prestigious products like Tops Chrome, Panini Prism, Panini uh, Select are all becoming like the sort of the, the cards which um, are, are desired by a lot of collectors. But there's no real way for us to get into the in terms of collecting. We can't go to to Asda or Tesco and pick up a box of Panini Prism. Um, it's just not it's it's just not doing it. It's becoming such a more exclusive hobby. Um, and as I talked about with Vincent last year, I feel like Panini put it onto the uh, last year last last week. Um, I feel like Vincent. Um, uh, sorry, I'm getting confused. I feel like Prism and Panini are taking the right step, the first step to getting these products put onto to our shelves in, in, in stores over here. Um, but I mean, you, it's interesting you say because stickers and, and you said you were collecting the Panini Merlin stickers. Is that correct? Yeah, um, they're top top Merlin Premier League. Top, top Merlin, there you go. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's crazy you bring that up, and it leads me on to my next point um, because obviously this week we saw um, Gary V make a it was overrated, underrated video on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I woke up, I checked my stories, and everybody was posting the clips of it, yeah. um, and he was basically saying that soccer stickers football stickers is the culture of soccer and football um and it's probably the future of, of what this hobby sort of lies on um what are your thoughts and your opinions of that statement and what he was saying in that video i i 100 agree with him and i think what's really 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 exciting is that gary v and uh, someone who's wasn't born up what wasn't raised in the uk um card sticker collection culture actually appreciates that um it's hard to understand the nostalgic connection people like you and I will have to the shootouts, the match tax, uh, the, the Merlin and Panini stickers because of they didn't do that themselves. But it's, it's, it's quite mind blowing to, to actually imagine that everyone in Europe uh, in some way or another collected stickers in some form. Panini have a, have a, um, a sticker set for pretty much every league in Europe. I remember going to Cyprus on holiday and buying Cypriot League Panini stickers, which were the most re you know remote random stickers ever. But there'll be people in Cyprus who have a connection to those stickers in the same way that someone from Portugal, someone from the UK will have a connection to those stickers. And what's also exciting about the stickers is that generally speaking, they're aesthetically pleasing. And I think one problem people have with like match tanks is that, you know, they're covered in statistics and random defense and attack yeah. scores that no one cares about. And they take away from sort of the actual appreciating the player. Whereas these stickers, these photos are taken by Panini or Top specifically for the sticker. They're a nice headshot. They're clean. They're, um, they're you know, they're, they're just cool. And I, I think, uh, the nostalgic connection to anything uh, cannot be um, overstated enough. And we've seen that with Pokemon. We've seen how the most valuable cards in Pokemon tend to be the ones where people, you know, Charizard was the coolest Pokemon in the playground. Well, Messi was the coolest stickers have in the playground. So what's to say that can't sort of emulate the same way? Yeah, I, I, everything you just said, completely agree. Um, I feel like one sort of misconception or one thing which a lot of people sort of worry about when it comes to stickers um, and it's it's one of the biggest things I hear a lot of people bring up when when we, when we talk about stickers is um, they're mass produced, they're overly produced. People saying there's millions of these stickers flying about uh, and all of this. And I I mean you, you're not wrong. You know these stickers are being produced like crazy. They have been since we were kids. I mean I, we used to have we used to be able to go to stack. I've got a stack behind me in a box where it's 2018. I opened 300 packs of 2018 World Cup stickers and. There's, there's literally a, probably about 200 stickers in there, which are like all like swaps, which which I can't use because I've already stuck them into the album. Um, and it's like you know, kids used to go to school with 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 stickers stuck onto lunch boxes and stuff like that. It was just a cool thing to have. Um, but I, I just feel like when it comes to the population reports of, of these stickers, like you look at the 2006 Messi sticker, I, I feel I think the pop was PSA 10 was four PSA 10s. Mm -hmm. It might be it might be more now. That's the last time I checked. Um, and it's the population reports is what's going to keep these these stickers valuable and it's going to push this market is is because they're not going to be these crazy prism print run like psa gem rates yeah. at all you know yeah you can find these boxes sealed but not as easily as you can find like prison boxes sealed yeah you're probably paying a lot less as well for stickers um but that's what's fascinating to me is i actually do feel like that regardless of how many of these stickers are printed I feel like it's a lot harder to grade a sticker as well, um, and, and I feel like that's one thing which you know people need to start start you know thinking about is because I do feel like it is overlooked in, in the hobbies general. Which again leads me on to my next question: 
Um, you specifically, Joe, do you feel that, that stickers are being over, overlooked by a large part of this hobby? Um, and, and do you feel like it's, it's time for us to start taking it a little bit more seriously? Yeah, I think the word I would use is um, underappreciated. That yeah. some people won't know like how how um how cool they are, but not enough people do. They're underappreciated. If if you if going on from what you just said, sort of the the, the reason I like stickers is kind of threefold. Firstly, you, they're hard to grade out the packet, even if the packet's mint in a sealed box. They're hard to grade anyway because they're not meant to be graded. They're meant to be stuck in an album. The corners yeah. are weak. Centering's not great. Secondly, the older stickers weren't kept in mint condition because they were stuck in albums or put in the back pocket in the playground they, they weren't in a condition and thirdly gary v bangs on about um how our generation's artwork will be you know trading card stickers like the charizard like uh messy uh, mega cracks well stickers will form a massive part of that because of the nostalgic connection that we've mentioned so i think in terms of whether you whether you want to collect them or invest in them uh, regardless of what you want to do with them there's uh, there's enjoyment in it for everyone because they are so iconic and my, my dad, for example, knows nothing about football cards or stickers. He doesn't know what Prism is. He doesn't know what Chrome is. But he knows what football stickers are because he collected them as a kid. And yeah. I'm pretty sure he probably could, knows where his, his stickers are in the same way that every other person of his age and the generation before and after him probably know what they are as well. So I think there's massive potential in uh, stickers. And uh, yeah, and they're also really fun to just like open as well, I think. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, for me, I was, I, like I said, I opened 300 packs. Um, and my main chase was I was trying to get that, that 2018 Mbappe sticker yeah. um, to grade, um, which was just kind of sucks because I didn't stick one into the album for that reason because I, I you know they were they were going up in price and it was like they were like 40 pound a sticker and I was like I can't just that's just wasting. Although that, that album will never be completed now, which is crazy to me. Um, yeah, but that's the thing. It's it, I feel like it's a lot more cost effective to rip stickers as well than it is to sort of go and buy a box of like a Panini Prism. I mean, you know, how much is a box of Panini Prism? It's $120 for a, for a pack, of like a hundred pack box of stickers. I think you can get them for like 60 or 70 quid from WH Smith. You know, I think it's like 50, yeah. 60p a pack and there's a hundred packs in the box. So there, there's the math. Um, but it, it, it's so much more satisfying being able to rip multiple packets and try and chase these stars. Um, yeah, obviously, again, we're going back to the, the earlier years. Is there going to be a lot less product for people to try and find to, to pull these cards? And it's, the, the prices might be a lot more expensive. But for me, it goes back to the, the, the nostalgia of it, of trying to complete an album when I was younger and, and asking my mum and dad to buy me packs out of the, you know, the supermarket when they were leaving or, you know, the, the off license or anything. Like, it was it, that, that's, just, that's just my feel for it. And I feel like there's a lot of people, not just you and me, who are sitting here talking about nostalgia, who are in the same boat as us, who feel like, yeah, I'm miscollecting stickers. I used to do that as a kid. Why are these not getting enough attention? And I feel like, you know, five, ten years from now, you're going to see that come like full, like full fold, and we're going to start seeing stickers who, which we used to see as kids, start taking the reins and then potentially uh, increasing value. Obviously, you're always going to have your main superstars um, with, with Messi, Ronaldo, and, and now obviously Mbappe and Neymar, but. You know, some of these some of these other legends which people sort of forget now. Um, I feel like you're gonna start seeing I mean, for me personally, I don't think Frank Lampard, Steven Gerrard, and Paul Scholes get enough love. Um, I remember I remember having their stickers and cards when I was younger. Um, and I feel like eventually you're gonna start seeing these as more and more people get into the hobby, especially in the UK for ourselves. Um, I feel like you're gonna see these these kind of players pick up a lot more traction. Yeah. Uh, one thing I also would mention is that um, people often fail to realise that most of the time a, a true rookie of a player is a sticker. So Ronaldo's 2002, Ronaldinho sticker, Kaká sticker, they're all stickers because stickers are iconic wherever wherever you were in the world, whereas cards are more um, location specific. And um, I think that as well is just huge. I mean, I mean, I think collectors also will, will enjoy stickers because they appeal to the collector and that once they're in an album, they're preserved. You can't take them out. You can't sell your complete album and then have some reseller split up and sell all the valuable ones and you know yeah. uh, flog the rest they're, they're preserved in the collection so it appeals to both and uh yeah i like you I, I can't i can't understate how important they are to my culture as well and and my dad's and my, my friends and i think a lot of people agree with, with with what you said um and and your take on it and and anyone who's watching this who may not sort of be into stickers or maybe sort of on the cusp of like i'm looking but i'm not there yet um mm -hmm. You know, do do your research, ask questions. You know, I'll I, I'm not I'm not the most um, the most knowledgeable person when it comes to stickers. Uh, I do I do have a lot of stickers at PSA. 
I have a lot of stickers here, which I'm sending off. I've got a bunch of um, a bunch of Jaden Sancho um, Panini 365 stickers, which are about to go out to, to PSA, um, which are 2018 as well, which is like sort of a claim to, I guess, close to his. I don't think it's, it's actual true rookie, but it's cl it's close to true. It's close to rookie, which is like rookie year uh, mm -hmm. for me, which is which is super super dope. They, they look really cool, um, but don't be don't be like you know willing like just throwing money at this without doing your research it's 100 percent a case of regardless if these are cheap you still need to go and do your actual due diligence and, and understand what makes the sticker market tick and what stickers are, are actually valuable and might hold value in the future um it's it's not just as straightforward as just going and buying the, the stars because some of these stickers are like 12th year cards for some of these players uh or stickers yeah. sorry um so just to close off the episode um i'm sure you might have seen me do this with vincent last week um, I did a, um, a quick fire round of questions where um, one word answer, two word answer, just keep it short. Um, yeah. I just want your your views of what you might see or who you might think or, or what might happen. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll, I'll start rattling them off here. Just just give your, your first raw emotion, honest answer, and, and let's see where it goes. Okay. Okay. So the first question is, who do you think will win the Euros 2020, obviously this summer? Portugal. Okay, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. <gasps> oh, <laughs> one one. That's one one. That's one one. Um, okay, one player who you haven't invested in yet, but you would you would like to. Uh, Kaka. Kaka. Okay, I, I respect Kaka. Who is the goat? You can uh, repeat, you can repeat your answer if you want to. I uh, I'm gonna go Pele. Okay. Um, and the last one is it's a bit younger. Um, Fatty or Haaland? No context. Haaland. Haaland. Okay. Question. I think that's two for Haaland now. It's two for Haaland. Okay. It's a silly question, that. Okay. Well, that's uh, a <laughs> <that's been> this... <laughs> silly question. Um, okay. So that's been the episode today. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot shorter than last week. But, Joe, uh, you know, the, the value you've brought to this, this episode has been crazy. Um, I want to give you the opportunity now to. Um, you know, tell people where they can find you, where they can see like your content, you know, it, if it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, where, where can they find you to, to go and sort of digest it and look at your content? Yeah, if you, if you want to check me out, then um, I'm at Jojo JMS on Instagram and uh, YouTube. I'm giving YouTube a crack. I'm quite uh, inexperienced, but it's good fun. And uh, basically my, my uh, sort of aim right now is just to share the love, um, spread the love of the hobby, enjoy it. And uh, any questions you have, I'm more than happy to answer. I think my my sort of speciality would be sort of the eBay side, leveraging actually a sort of a business long term approach where you've got regular incomes of stock, as opposed to sort of short term flipping. But yeah. um, any questions, please have a chat with me. And uh, I really thank you for this opportunity. It's been a great to chat with you as always, man. Uh, I can I can think of a better guest. Like I said to you just before when we were talking, um, I've known Joe what probably about seven or eight months. Um, yeah, you know he's 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 got so much knowledge for not just the not just the hobby in terms of the actual the cards but the actual business side of it as well um he's 19 years old this kid's you know he's destined to be to be great in this hobby he's creating content he started killing it so go and follow him his that's obviously on screen now you can see his that um and you know we'll, we'll see you next time thank you for watching um subscribe hit the notification bell so you can get any notifications when we go live um with, with any video on the slide platform um and we'll see you next week